Okay, do I have your permission to record? Y you do, yeah. Okay, the the way that I typically... Well, <laughs> record, record, do I have your permission to uh, review? Of course. Okay, great. Of course. Uh, so oh, okay. I, I conducted an interview with Rob Williams on public banking and um, John Root Jr. on public banking. And today, yep. we're going to talk to another expert from Massachusetts on okay. the topic of public banking. Sir, could you please introduce yourself, who you are, and your background on the subject? Okay. Uh, my name is David Sneakus. I'm 72, a Vietnam veteran. Uh, did a short stint for NSA. Uh, <clears throat> and... Uh, uh, basically, uh, well, uh, have, have a, you know, uh, uh, almost 17 year old daughter and living here in Newton, Massachusetts. Uh, the background came about in, uh, 2004 when, uh, a friend of mine sat, uh, down for dinner, had a beer or two or wine and said, uh, did you know three buildings went down on 9-11 and, uh, I'm a pretty astute guy. I watch the news. Uh, I read the paper. And uh, I was totally uh, taken aback by his statement that there was a third building that went down on 9-11, which was, you know, three years after 9-11. And, so, uh, and so that uh, compelled me in, into a curiosity. Uh, I had been, uh, uh, quote, unquote, a normal citizen, more or less. Uh, uh, I thought money was... Uh, you used to pay your bills and you went to work and, and that was it. That's what my father taught me. You, uh, I, I made money and I spent money and uh, everything was fine, right. more or less. Right. And so so I um, delved into the subject of money, which was totally opposite of my high school, college education of, of boring economics. Just <laughs> totally opposite. Yes. Yes, <laughs> to sir. To to yes. Totally. <laughs> I know what you're talking yeah. about. I do. Okay, exactly. So, um, uh, it, uh, in, uh, in hindsight, it's a mind t twist, or the F-U-C word, it's a mind fuck, that uh, we're being uh, uh, scammed. And uh, the first thing that I came up with was with the problem was usury. So I went to, uh, the, the research had led me to uh, see how banking might be corrupt, might be deceptive, might be this... Uh, a thing that's uh, new, not really working really well, and so I, uh, the first book I read was uh, um, you know, <clears throat> uh, the Creature from Jekyll Island, oh, okay. and uh, that that kind of uh, got me into the usury issue, and then public banking became uh, an answer to to usury. Uh, I believe that the uh, making. Uh, uh, oh, oh, it, because um, I always wonder for like 50, 60 years, how come uh, there's uh, uh, inflation? How come, why is there inflation? Uh, uh, and, and then in my search, I found that hundreds of years, the price of bread would be stable, five cents or a penny, whatever it was, and things were stable for a long, long time. So why is there inflation? Right. Why can't I save enough money in 20 years that would be equal to the money I saved from the first day be the same value when I was uh, 65 or 70. So I knew there was an issue. I knew there was a problem. I didn't know what it was. So I came to the, uh, uh, through research, and I have all the books, money books. I have at least 20 books on money, and I read them all. And uh, uh, I uh, came across Ellen Brown in the uh, uh, health aspect of uh, uh, of our society, and then she uh, went from her health books to public banking. So we uh, were on uh, chat rooms and uh, uh, various uh, uh, conversations about money. We went to conferences. I studied the uh, history of uh, the money in America, the history of money in Europe, history of money in Babylon, and uh, basically it is a usury problem. And um, I got into the uh, uh, money, uh, the, the public banking issue 
up to the point of finding out that the state of North Dakota had a public bank in which they did much better than Wall Street, and they were more or less, I believe, a banking that was for the people. So they still charged some interest, but the interest went back into the state of North Dakota. Right. So public, so public banking was a uh, was a way for the states, state of Massachusetts. Uh, and a feasibility study came out at uh, about 2004, 2003, 2004, uh, where one of the uh, senators, the president of the Senate, uh, or the president of the House, I forget which it was, uh, issued a statement calling for the feasibility of study uh, of uh, the public bank. And then I got a letter of recommendation from uh, uh, Barney Frank, who recommended me to be really? on the board. Wow. Oh, yeah, I got, the, I got that letter. That's and uh, Because I went to Barney Frank, and I told him about the Federal Reserve and these other issues that he was have with Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae, and I was getting into foreclosure issue, and uh, people were losing their homes at that time to uh, banks, and I knew there was something wrong. I didn't know how it was working at that time. So the public banking uh, feasibility study went on, and that study was not well publicized so i got to be on the board and i got to know where the meetings were and john root and i were, were all the only ones there <laughs> at these meetings yeah. he must have told you his hold he on, must have on. told you his hold side on. of the story hold on i just yeah. want to summarize for everybody listening in so okay go ahead um, yeah what we're hearing is that you were recommended by barney frank who helped write the dodd frank <laughs> bill to fix <laughs> the banking system in America after the worst recession in almost 80 years right, to yeah. sit on an exploratory committee for Massachusetts State to uh, investigate public studies, banking? Correct. Yeah, I have that letter, uh, and uh, wow. I don't have it in front of me. But, uh, wow. So, um, and so that's, that's with my, not a claim to fame, but it was just a nice introduction to the uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the governor at that time was... Uh, 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 God, I can't think of his name. And uh, he he really caused a lot of the problems when be, am, uh, the Amquest problem. He's the one that made a lot of money. But I be, excuse me, I believe he made a lot of money uh, on uh, the mortgage uh, issue. <laughs> so, and, <laughs> so okay, what, okay. Say, excuse me. Right. So um, uh, I, I, and this is all written up. If you want to read some of my letters, they're on the op-ed news. Uh, Dot, uh, up at news.com that Rob Call is uh, head of. Uh, so uh, let's see. So we, uh, John Root and I went to these meetings, and nothing came about them because. Well, I'll tell you a little story. One, one of us in Springfield, I invited a, the press, uh, the Springfield newspaper there, and uh, he uh, was he was excited because of the story I told him, and then uh, when I when I when uh, John Root and I got there, the, the guy. Uh, uh, from the media was there, but he was ushered out by the uh, 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 what is he? They, um, by by someone, and uh, he never called. He, he never took my calls again. Oh. And so uh, before the meeting, he was enthusiastic. Oh, we're going to meet two o'clock. He was really excited. He wanted to get some information, but he was ushered out by one of the lobbyists for the banks. Mm. And so uh, that Shocking. went on for about a. a went out for about a year and then uh, the last voting meeting was uh, uh, I, I think it was a, a scam or some sort that the uh, the two people who were invest who were in charge of the feasibility study uh, had a vote and the bankers uh, took over the vote because I wasn't on the board I did I wasn't a voting member of, of that committee so, so I didn't have any in so I didn't have the input and then uh, then my public banking interest phased out uh, for a while, but I introduced a bill which was uh, a copy of the bill that the state of North Dakota uh, had had submitted to the state. And that bill, I believe, is uh, House Bill 1182, 1192 in the year 2003 or 2004. And in, I can get you these details later. In Massachusetts. Uh, in Massachusetts, I, I okay. introduced the bill recommending the bank of massachusetts and it's a long bill it was well well written well conceived i took a lot of time on it and i copied a lot of things that were from the state of north dakota 
Were you a legislator when you proposed that, or did you do it? No, as no, a... no, I, no. I was just a citizen, a quote, a quote unquote citizen. Nice. And my, and my bill was uh, sent in through K Khan, Representative K Khan. Okay. Or Ruth Balls, or I can't remember. And uh, that bill went nowhere. It just got shot down. And uh, uh, that was uh, that. Be, uh, that's because I have no. Uh, you know, uh, clout in the Congress. I'm an individual. John Root was uh, out in the western part of Massachusetts, or the mid midwest part of Massachusetts, and then he moved further out. And all I had was an educational uh, background, the research that I did on my own. So I uh, didn't get any uh, traction on the bill. And uh, basically, uh, I, I, I donated money to the public banking uh, out in the, uh, where uh, uh, um, uh, Ellen Brown was. Read her, uh, read all her books. Had had um, had a couple of meetings with public banking uh, people who were excited about getting a public bank in, in Massachusetts, but they don't. They didn't have any political clout. And it seems like we're all preoccupied in making money, so we really don't have the time to do the research and and hobnob with the legislators and be lobbyists. And I, I haven't, uh, I never got a team together, you know, to do anything. So uh, I know it was a futile, I didn't know it was a futile attempt, but I loved it because it was my research. And it was, I, I got my understanding of money, public banking, the foreclosure issues, et cetera. So how does that, yeah, that's, that's, that's a, that's a uh, a very, um, it it felt like a movie, what you just told me. Oh, no, I can't hear you. What? You're, it, you're not coming in very clear, by the way. Oh, sorry. It yeah. felt like a movie, what you just told me. Oh, oh a movie. I, and I have, a, uh, I wrote a uh, non-published play called The Grand Scam. And uh, it, uh, it's, a, it's a fairly nice read. But like I, like, uh, like I don't have the total motivation to go out and try to sell it or anything. But it's a, it's a, it's a nice written piece about uh, uh, money and it's, uh, for, it's more or less on the foreclosure issue, the scam. Mm -hmm. uh, but because after, uh, learn, after doing a study of public banking, I went into the study of money down a, a deeper rabbit hole in which I uh, hope you're, if you're sitting down because you're in a car or your audience is sitting down, I found out from my own research that banks do not lend money. Uh, okay, okay, I got to stop you there. We, okay, yeah, uh, yeah, you, I will you, might, you might want to. Yeah. Yes, I will stop you there with respect. If people want to hear more about this concept of how banking works, please see the interview okay. I did with John Root Jr. He goes into extensive detail about he this. Goes into, he, and it's oh, awesome. Yeah, he, he's, he's, probably, he's probably a little better than I am at it, but uh, yeah, it was it was good. He explained the, the philosophy, but but really, in California, we have yeah. just had the law passed allowing for public banks to happen. The only other one is in North sure. Dakota. We just had this legislation mm -hmm. here. Nobody's actually built the bank, and Californians are ignorant about what this is. Now, I interviewed Ellen Brown a couple of years ago. I have been following okay. public banking, and I thought it was a brilliant idea. Uh, to yeah. me, it's basically like creating a, a national bank for your own that you run, and hijinks from international banksters don't get to get involved. Uh, but mm -hmm. people in California don't really understand it very well. So I wanted to talk to people who did, and could you mm -hmm. explain to people in California, how does the, what do you get with the public bank, and how does it insulate you from the Federal Reserve? Oh, it, it, well, it's a fairly, fairly simple. If you, if you go through the history of the, uh, the Bank of North Dakota, it's basically that route. You take the, uh, you take the uh, ph philosophy, the, the uh, accounting that a, a real uh, the banks that the banks are doing right now, and you are not, uh, you are a, you become a public bank rather than a private bank. So in America, besides the state of North Dakota, most banks are privately owned banks beholden to their shareholders. Very simple, you just take the shareholders from a private uh, side to the public side and you start a bank for a city, a municipality, a state, or whatever group, a county, and you create the same 
uh, the same venue, like the same uh, accounting system as banks do, but only the interest that's gathered from the loan, quote-unquote, loaning of the money, and I'll just use quote-unquote, and then that money stays in the city, town, municipality, or group, instead of going to shareholders who are not, who are just interested in money. So the uh, uh, state benefits. So instead of c the budget being cut, then the, the, for teachers or for parks or for uh, infrastructure doesn't doesn't uh, continually have to be uh, for, uh, expanded. The monies can be used to keep the money as in in, uh, in in a constant. It doesn't have to inflate so much because the money is going back to the people who are creating the money. The, the, the value of money is created by the people who, are, who work day-to-day, -day, 40, 50 hours a week. They, they create the value for the money, or that, that's, that's issued. And that's a whole other aspect. So yeah, you don't want to go down there yet. <laughs> well, so how, <laughs> how does that insulate people, their hard-earned wad of currency, from hijinks? from the Federal Reserve as... How does that insulate people from the Federal Reserve hijinks as we saw in 2008? I, 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 don't, I don't understand the question. Hygiene? Hijinks. So the Federal Reserve plays money, uh, plays games with money, they inflate the money. How does the yes, public bank yes. insulate somebody from the bad things that the Federal Reserve Bank does? You're you're going to you're going to be in a stabilizing banking system with a public bank. You're, it's not going to stabilize it right away, but over time, the the the, the money will the, the money and the value of goods and services will level out instead of having to be inflated all the time. Like uh, the food that the food prices are going up. Uh, all the goods that are in America are increasing in, in enormously. Uh, and then, then we go into the, the, the banking issue. The, when a person, so-called borrower, goes to the bank to get a loan, they create new money so that oh, that money... Oh, right, right. So the new money is inflating. So if there's a million dollars of circulation in one small community and somebody goes and borrows a million dollars, then the money in circulation is $2 million and everything has to double. The, the cost of food doubles. But because that's how inflation works. That's what, that's what one of the reasons why I well, it's not one of those are that's some of the answers I found out in, in, in my research in public banking and then research into money, how banks work. So the inflation is really caused by the banks and the so called borrowers in a criminal activity. <laughs> <laughs> legal. Legal. Legal, but no, criminal. It's, it's illegal. Both, both, both the, at, at a closing, the bank comes with no money and the so-called borrower comes with no house, correct? And it's magic. The bank leaves with money and the, the so-called borrower leaves with a home. The keys to a home. It's magic, and you have to understand that it is kind of like magic. It's a trick, and uh, when you understand it, then you may or may not want to borrow money in, a, in, a, in that sense because the money can be issued by a public bank for all the goods and services that we need without paying usurious money, all the money in your pocket, is an IOU, it's a Federal Reserve note. And the way you would, like, the, the question of how do you insulate away from the jinx of the Federal Reserve note is you start stabilizing. Or you could do a John Root, uh, you know, you can go to a common good type uh, system where you are starting to issue a new currency huh. um, huh. Or, or just a new payment system. So the public banking is a step in the right direction. These things are going to take years to manifest, 
but it, eventually it will happen because people are getting uh, like yourself, myself. We, you know, we talk to people. The the energy of our work is is, is, is signaled in our consciousness. We know it's something's wrong with this system. We've known it for years, and those who can sit down and not be watching the football and the TV and the impeachment proceedings all the time, sit down and talk and relax to, with, with groups of people, and then they start talking about what they really want in life, what's the better world going to be like, because this is, I can't stand the one I'm doing now because there's high suicide, there's um, a lot of foreclosures going on, there's a lot of drugs going on, opioids, heroin, marijuana, heroin, all these drugs, including white sugar, <laughs> <laughs> they're, yeah, they're, they're yeah. blowing people's minds. Yeah. So, you, you know, so there's there's people who are getting healthier, thinking clearer, and uh, devoting themselves to the changes that are necessary. Uh, and I'm just one of them, you know. Uh, and uh, I'm as helpful as I could if, if there was, you know, uh, when John Rue came aboard, it was just, we, we just hit it off, and then we said, well, let's, let's help each other do this. And We've been doing it for a while, and then there's, uh, you know, uh, various people throughout Massachusetts, throughout the various states, the public banking groups, uh, the money groups, the freedom patriots, the uh, republics of America, the states, uh, the states, uh, Anna von Ries, there's uh, a lot of independent people out there who are basically on their own egos, too, that uh, may or may not want to form a team. But uh, we have to get... the. Oh, one little side note is I believe the, in, in the, in the, uh, in the stars that the stars are similar to the stars that were in the sky around 1700s, 1750s. So the, the, uh, the energy of the, of the planet, of the people are towards a revolution, but they didn't probably, probably don't want a, a violent one. We'll, we'll use one with paper. <laughs> this will be a paper war. Right, like the paper, like the paper chase movie. I think. Right. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. what they're doing now. I mean, you rarely okay. see wars happen, but you see embargoes mm -hmm. attacking other countries every other yeah, month. Yeah. Yeah. This is, you know, the, the idea of, of killing other human beings is so crazy in most a lot of people's minds. But uh, uh, another side note is my belief that uh, processed food. Makes, helps you believe in the illusion and illegalities of of our society, the the, the killing uh, that's especially going on uh, in the world. Okay, uh, other human beings killing other human beings, because a lot of human beings are heavy duty meat eaters, and and you're eating the violence of uh, of those killed animals. You know, you're you're really taking on their consciousness and energy, and that's. Uh, that's my belief, and um, so it's not uh, well well known, I'm sure. But there's plenty of books on uh, food and behavior that are really, really, uh, really good. Well, let me ask you a question. If, yeah. Let me ask you a question, if I could. Uh, you said you worked Go at please. the you worked at the NSA. Yes, I did. Yeah. Uh, National Security yeah. Administration. Yeah, yeah, the NSA, the uh, the guys that. Uh, uh, listen to everything. I left there <laughs> in a year or so. I, I left there in a year after that because I, I, I knew what they were up to. There was a, it was just all eavesdropping. <clears throat> and I left with uh, one small little statement that I kept up in my mind for, for, for a long time. I still do. It, it was, act as if everything you do will be known. Oh, yeah. Because it will. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Whether you're trying to hide anything whether it be money or scamming or uh, uh, affairs or whatever, you're, you're going to be known eventually. So um, there, there are no real secrets in the world. It's just who's covering up uh, these things uh, for sure. So let me, let me and, ask you, uh, let me ask you then, a, a comparison. You were at the yeah. NSA. You love democracy. I'm sure you mm -hmm. keep up on China. Um, uh, no, I, I didn't keep up on China too much. I have to pick up somebody coming from China on Saturday. Okay, I'll okay. Find but, out all about China then. <laughs> but in general, you have yeah. the Chinese government spies on all their people, yeah. videotapes them, cameras, intrusion. And here in the West, we constantly criticize that. Look, this government's totalitarian. Mm. They spy on their people. 
What does it say that America does just as much spying on its own people as communist China? <clears throat> We're the land of the free and they're the totalitarians, but we practice the same yeah. infrastructure? Yeah, uh, that, that's because most of us love the lie. We believe the lie more than the truth. We love to stick our head in what? the sand and not, not know anything that's going on. It's, it's, I don't know if it's a human nature thing, but there's plenty of books on how the lie is mo much... It's, it's, easier to, it's easier to believe a lie than it is to believe the truth. Hmm. At this time in our society, <laughs> because we're lying to ourselves, in my opinion, by eating processed food, I mean, it happens all over, it's not just here in America, we're eating food with labels on it that makes us think this is good food. It's shit. It's crap. You know, it's, it's not it, It's not even uh, uh, recognizable by in, in, in pronunciation. If you read packages, that just, just go on and on with the, with the food items, the chemicals that are in there. And that fools the body, and that fools the thinking process. So we're, we're, we're enslaved by our eating. So our eating creates... The, the, the news that we really need in our consciousness, the, 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 the plants and animals or whatever we eat, it, the chemicals, or, are giving us information. And that's how our consciousness develops. And so if we're eating this garbage food, that's all we're going to be. We're watching garbage TV. We're watching just too much of this quote-unquote crap because we're eating it. You know, we have to eat healthier. We have to eat, in my opinion, more grains, vegetables, and beans, more whole foods, foods that are nutritious and wholesome, you know, where, where, you're, where you don't have the idea that you can go out and kill somebody. You don't have the idea that you can rob somebody. You don't have the idea that you can foreclose on someone and, and throw their family out in the street. It, 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 this, this can't happen in a healthy society. And, then, and it wouldn't, you know, in a, in a healthier society. But we have to go through this process of seeing how bad it is because, because everything is in cycles. And the cycles that we're in on a day and night basis are a 24-hour cycle. The cycles of summer and winter are uh, uh, the, the sun going, the earth going around the sun. And then there's other cycles of, you know, the... Uh, the procession of the equinox, which is a 25,000-year cycle in which there are... Uh, okay. Uh, okay, yeah. let me... Let me, the, let me, let me yeah, yeah. Side, yeah. I, okay, <laughs> okay, okay. I, I hear what yeah. you're saying. Let me ask you one more question, if I could. Yeah. So, I want to ask you, what's the difference between these two things? You remember this game as a child. You were shown two different things, and you go, what's the difference between the two of them? So... Mm -hmm. Government A tells a breakaway province, you don't get to secede. And if you have a vote, we will send the SWAT team in to crack your heads open. Government A then sends the SWAT team in and starts cracking heads. Cracking heads yeah. open because they wanted to have a vote. They start arresting leaders and they start lying about them in the news. Yeah. Now, Government B is called a totally different government than government A. But government B also says, if you hold the vote, we're going to go in there with SWAT teams and crack heads. And then they do. And they crack grandmother's heads open because they wanted to have a vote. They send SWAT teams after offices. They point guns at people who want to vote. And they arrest leaders. What's the difference between government A and government B? I don't, I don't, I don't know if you... I didn't hear, I didn't cl totally cl hear the, 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 uh, the, uh, the, um, the description of both government A and government B, but they sounded the same. Okay, so government A is called China towards okay. Hong Kong, and government B is Spain towards Catalan. Both governments have said, you do not have the right to vote. If you do, we'll send in police forces. They have. They have beaten up protesters, cracked heads open because they wanted to have a vote, and arrested political leaders. And both China and Spain have constitutions that say you don't get a secede, meaning that legally they kind of do have the right to say that. 
What's the difference between Spain and China? There's no, there's no difference. What? The governments are not run by, by people. They're run by banks and money. It's all about the money, Marcus. What? Because my, yes. I am shocked to hear that. Yes. Nah, well, that's what it took me a number of years to figure that out. But it, we don't have votes. We do. The, the, the uh, governments that are in power, in order to keep them, the, the uh, money elite that are in power need the governments to protect their status. So they're, they're going to lose if the governments are not in existence to enforce the prepayment of loans. So that's why they're continually uh, keeping the secret of money pretty well hidden because they can and they have to. That's, that's where the truth will come out, in my opinion, that these bankers are, are behind all governments, all wars of government, or, or all wars of bankers uh, initiated. Well, they hold have on. to continue to expand the system. Hold on, I gotta ask. So, obviously, you love America. You worked with the federal government and the NSA. You're a patriot. How come the West says that what China does is totalitarianism, but what Spain does is democracy? But they're doing the same thing. How come I hear condemnation for China and nothing about Spain doing the exact same methodology? Why is that? There's we want to create differences, so we'll use different words, but they mean the same thing. Totalitarianism, even even the, even the democracy word in America is not democracy. It's a it's a mob rule. Democracy is really mob rule. It's not it's not one vote, one person. We're in, we're supposed to be in a republic, but we're not. So I don't know China and in Spain. I I can't uh, uh, talk on that too much, uh, but. All governments are terrorist organizations. They're run and they're manipulated by the elite monetary system or elite people because they, because that's the government is needed. If everybody was sovereign, we would all be kind of equal. Would would be kind of communistic. It would be kind of communal. It would be kind of everybody is doing what they want to do without being confused by money the uh, the the, uh, the the way that we are uh, preoccupied with making money is a sickness that's in every it's in every one of us that has joined the the the, the, the working class the, the people who are um, paying for the mortgage and consumer and consuming and that's all uh, part part of the game that they has to be played. So we're just talking about two different financial systems, a Chinese financial system, uh, America, European one, and they're just waging a war of words on each other when really both will do whatever it takes, democracy, totalitarianism, to keep that banker bottom line. Am I summarizing sure. this correctly? Yeah, what's that? Yeah, did I summarize that accurately, sir? Yeah, that, that sounds good to me. You know, it, wow. if, if you go down to any of these situations, usually you find money is the uh, follow the money. It has been has uh, has that uh, that cliche. Follow the money, and if you follow the money, you'll see. But uh, these these are the reasons for m many things: robberies, budget problems, family divorces, um, uh, uh, bankruptcies, uh, foreclosures, wars. They all revolve around money, and. Uh, uh, I can imagine thousands of years ago, you know, we'd live without money. We did things in communities that were the, for the benefit of ourselves and others as a, uh, uh, as, an, uh, 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 as an altruistic uh, society would, as a sovereign society would. When, you, when you're healthy, you want to give, you want to help others. You know, you don't want to take you know, taking money more and more. How much money can a millionaire want, or a billionaire? They want more. They want more. <laughs> it's, just a, it's, a, it's a sickness. You know, it's a real sickness. And most of these bankers that are presidents of the bank, they're making millions of dollars off the backs of people, in which they all they do is make 
computer entries on the computer. So we tired of talking about public banking. We got to totalitarianism. We got to communism. We want to go back to public banking, or are we going to go off to uh, the impeachment trials and uh, the? <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'll, I'll um, just a few more minutes, and I'll, I'll let you go. I really appreciate the <laughs> no, time. No, I, um, no, I can go on for hours. Well, more, I just, <laughs> well, I just just a couple more minutes. But since you brought it up, um, we have in America that has been polarized for a couple of years now. A lot of people talking about super divided, very divided. Now I've been, there's been multiple polls looking at the impeachment of Trump and just about all of them show this same pattern. If you thought he did it before the trial, you still do. And if you didn't, you still do. The trial didn't change anyone's opinion People are still split, red and blue, all this evidence, all this coverage, and it moved nothing to a consensus in America. It's meant not to move nothing because uh, what I believe, and it's in my own personal opinion, without any factual uh, 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 understanding, is that the Democrats are going to have Biden as the vice president nominee, and they have to protect his ass from any connection with the Ukraine, quote-unquote, corruption. So uh, this is all a game to keep Biden in the front-running uh, aspect without co- with, with, uh, impeaching Trump so that they don't go out so, that, so Biden and his son do, do not get investigated in the uh, uh, issues that have happened in Ukraine. And that's all I really know, because that makes sense to me, that these Democrats are putting on the show. The show goes on forever. It's, we're going to have a, a hearing on impeachment, and then we're going to have this impeachment today, that vote. And the vote, just, they just keep on babbling. These are just talking heads who say nothing. And all generalizations are usually lies. And, and um, I think it's just a cover-up, the scam, to uh, keep Biden out of the picture. But he will be, because... The Democrats have nominated him already. He's already going to be the vice presidential nominee, the presidential nominee for the Democrats. So you, you are totally breaking up now. Oh, I, I, I didn't say anything, but, but I, um, so the question now is, America's super polarized. This trial has oh. kept it polarized. When oh. does America come back together, or does it ever? come back together as each individual becomes healthier and healthier and sees the chaos or a problem and then has clarity through p- proper eating and proper lifestyle. Uh, and so how long is that? Is that is that next year? Is that 10 years from now? We're going to get everybody on the same track? I mean, things are bad. When does America pull back from this brink? Well, it, maybe things have to get worse before they get better. I don't know. I mean, that's, my, my, my sense is that uh, uh, the, the age that we're, the, the age of it's, it's ignorance and the age of stupidity, it, it's coming to an end. Now you're, you're, you're coming in broken. Yeah. I, I think it's yeah. that when I'm not saying anything, it does a, a, a feedback, but, um, okay. So, uh, last couple minutes, um, any websites, articles, essays, how can people find out more about you? What would you like people to go away with thinking or checking out? Well, my, my website is my name, davidsneakers.com, um, and um, I haven't updated it much, but there's a few nice little articles on there from the past. Uh, my name is David, D-A-V-I-D, S N. I E C K U S dot com. You give me a call at uh, 617-964-2951. That's uh, my home line. And uh, you can read some of the articles uh, that I wrote in Op-Ed News. Some of the articles that are on my website. And uh, definitely, uh, definitely call for any questions you have on the... Uh, Public banking, foreclosure, money, uh, health, health issues, diet. Diet. Yes, yes. I, I saw your website. You really do have a lot there. So if you are interested in making yourself 
uh, more informed about how to make the American financial system healthy, see David Snakes. And if you are interested in just making yourself a healthy, see David Snakes. He's got it all. <laughs> I got it all. It's, uh, uh, oh, yeah, I, uh, if anybody wants, uh, uh, I have a, a, a lecture that I will do in Massachusetts called Food and Money. Honest Food and Honest Money. Okay. So, that, that, that's the uh, that's a lecture that I have. I'll do it in libraries. I'll do it in uh, uh, churches, etc. Mostly free, maybe just a donation, and uh, uh, I'll be uh, probably starting that off in uh, February of next year, 2020. Well, whenever you get that on video, email me the link, and I will attach mm -hmm. it to the description of this interview. So when people watch the interview with you, they'll be able to see more of you. Uh, so send me that link, and I'll post it in the edit. I did it for other people. It's not a problem, sir. Well, we should have done, we should have done a uh, face, face, face thing, or because there's no video here. It's just oh. this AMT thing. What I do is I take uh, photos of people online and then some of the documents that they've talked about, and I make this kind okay, of yeah. – it's a very artistic, tasteful, nice-done collage – and that's the image. So when people are listening to you talk, they're looking at your face and some of your work. Okay, great. And uh, what's, your, what's your website? Where, where's that? So it'll be at Marcus Ruiz Evans on YouTube. That's M-A-R-C-U-S space R-U-I-Z space E-V-A-N-S at YouTube. But um, I will send you a copy. I'm going to email you a copy as soon as it's up today, tomorrow. Okay, sure. Marcus, thank you for calling, and uh, continue your uh, interviewing with people on public banking. There's a number of people I uh, can, can put you in touch with. Please. Uh, that has, huh? Please. Yeah, okay. And uh, 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 I'll get that list for you. I'll uh, see if I have a, uh, I'll photocopy it or uh, send it. Uh, I'll, I'll just, uh, I'll show you where to get it, I'm sure. It, uh, actually, actually, if you Google Massachusetts public banking, group, I think you'll find a list of 20 names that are, that are somewhat active. I'm going to do that, and anybody else that knows about public banking, I want to interview them. Okay, uh, great. Yeah, and then there's, there's uh, Amherst. In, uh, I had a box, all that information that I had on public banking when I went to the feasibility study, I had two big boxes. Um, they're uh, regular uh, boxes that you put your clothes in there. But as big as a TV type boxes, and they went to some doctor, some uh, two students who uh, did the pub, who were looking into the public banking as a, a thesis for their graduate program or essay or whatever they call it. And oh. I never got those back. I said, and uh, you know who might know? John Root might know those the names of the girls that came to our to our house and took those books. Okay. Uh, so there is, there is a, um, uh, my, my information has left me, because I wasn't interested in the public bank anymore, because I wasn't going to run a bank, I wasn't going to be in the bank. I knew it was a little a bit of a futile, futile attempt, but uh, I, I gave it away, that, uh, and uh, maybe I'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll find him. We'll find him and interview him, and I'll ask about the books. Okay, thank you. All right, I'll talk to you soon, sir, and I'll email you. Okay, okay. Okay, email me. Thank you. Right. Bye. Bye.